right? Uh, um, Coach Cumby and Louisiana Tech, their um, athletic team. Um, they're they're they've got, you know they had some they've had some different issues at quarterback with different injuries and different things. They, um, so uh, his offense, Cum Coach Cumby is a really excellent offensive coordinator. Everywhere he's been, he's done a great job. Defensively, they're playing well. Um, and run him a 3-3-5 scheme and doing a good job with that. Had a, a tough, dramatic loss to uh, Tulsa last week. Um, played really, really well against North Carolina State um, in that game and uh, um, came up short. But they're, uh, they're a good football team with some – and they're, they're coming here. We've, last year we played a really close game with them, and the year before we had a really close game. So it, uh, you want to see an exciting close football game. Uh, I come here Saturday there. Well coached and a good team. So um, – um, I'll take any questions at this time. Just before going to law tech in general, now that you're going to conference play, just talk about the state of conference, you would say, the teams that you have there. That yeah, um, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a very competitive conference. Uh, we've added some new teams with Kennesaw State coming in. We'll go there and play them later in the year outside of Atlanta. Um, and then, you know, of course, uh, you know, Liberty is still undefeated. and. Um, the only team that's beat them so far in the last two years is Oregon in the bowl game, and they're they're um, playing well and you know ec excellent players. And La Tech has always had tons of speed at receiver and you know really good D lineman and a great history of offense there. So, uh, uh, but I'm, you know we're excited about going into conference play and excited about our, our first conference game being at home, which is good. Talk a little bit about I guess the, the relief of not having to, to go up against Smoke Harris this time around. Yeah, uh, uh, Smoke Harris was an excellent player, not only on offense, but everywhere he uh, played on the special teams. Uh, but they got um, Jimmy Holiday, um, number six. He played for Western Kentucky last year, and um, now he transferred over to uh, – uh, Louisiana Tech, and he's kind of doing some of the same things they did offensively with Smoke last year. He does the reverses and different things, speed fly sweeps, and he's really athletic and can run and make some plays. And they've got some other big, um, big time receivers, and um, they got two really good running backs. And so um, um, they're 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 talented on offense. Their offensive line's big. Defensively, um, they're playing really well. Also, does the game plan change a little bit? Um, no, they were running a lot of the same with all the quarterbacks. They were doing a lot of his um, coach's system. You know, he, he teaches that system, and they do a good job of reading it and pre-snap reads, seeing the secondary, and, and then the full progression across the, the way he does it. Um, so, uh, I, of course, he knows different strengths of each quarterback. We haven't seen them all, we, um, except for uh, Turner. We've seen enough film on Turner to know exactly what his, you know, what they kind of want to use him wise. Uh, I don't know. It had to differ um, if they use uh, if they use Bullock and and if Baker's back healthy or not. So uh, uh, I think he'll. They always adapt, but you don't have enough film on them to really know about that yet. I mean, assuming Turner is a starter, just talk a little bit about him. And what yeah, Turner. Um, Big guy can make all the throws. The the thing about Turner is he's also a really physical runner. I mean, he he runs ball hard and and he's a big guy and does that and um, looks like he you know looks for sure like he understands what um, Sonny wants him to do offensively and um, and then the, uh, the young you know, Evan Bullock came in at the end of the game last week and looks like he's eight foot tall. I think he's like six six and a half or something like that. He's a he's he's tall um, and yeah, he um, throws the ball well. Um, and uh, looks like he has good um, good ability to re to really sling the football. Talk a little bit about the running back, Marcus Crosby, some of their returners. Mm -hmm. I don't think you guys saw him last year because I think he was injured, but mm -hmm. now he's back here. Uh, the Davenport, yeah. yeah, and Davenport and Wiggins, yeah. we play. Um, yeah, um, Davenport's a really good player. He's he's big. He he catches the ball well out of the backfield too. Uh, and Amari, we've played against him. He's a really good player, physical. They're both, you know, kind of a one-two punch of the guys that play. And um, you know, in in um, Sonny's offense, the running backs catch the ball quite a bit, also. So um, they're they're um, multi-dimensional backs. Going back to the Monmouth game, with the Travis Burke penalty. Did you maybe watch the film and see maybe what he did that caused the the, the taunting or whatever? It was? Yeah, um, they called a taunting. Um, he blocked a guy, and then when he kind of stood up, he kind of stood over him. And then he started moving on, and they threw the flag. So they threw the flag. That's what the refs saw. So that's what it was. Of course, that was a, a, a very critical play in the game. Uh, you know, we go for it fourth and one on the 19, and felt like we wanted to keep the momentum and didn't want to get the ball back to their offense. And we make a great 
block. Every, we, you know, knock up that three or the four of their guys down, and and they um, um, called a flag and brought it all the way back, which uh, was a big momentum change because then we got backed up and we punted them. They had a short field, um, so that's uh, we, we 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 talk about that all the time. Travis is a really good young man. I think he was just excited, um, but it wasn't like he anything that I saw that he pushed him or anything like that. But he, you're not supposed to stand over him. The referee threw it and threw the flag on him, so we'll go by what the ref said. Yeah, Vic's doing good. Yeah. Um, he's a real good competitor, long, athletic young man, and um, yeah, he's he's getting better and better. And we're gonna need him to to keep better, getting better this week, and and playing the game Saturday, and keep going from there. But excited about where Vic's headed. Uh, your safeties, uh, Evans and, and Christian, just talk about what they've done this year. So definitely seems like they've taken their steps. Yeah, they have. Uh, um, they have. They've really done well. JoJo um, getting um, put out for the. Um, um, targeting call uh, was a big blow to us defensively, um, and uh, um, so because he's a really a, a big time playmaker, and that did hurt us defensively in the second half. Um, but um, we we work on it all the time, and we can't launch into receivers, and so hopefully um, he and he keep, he's played a lot of football and understands that. And we need to make sure we don't have any. Uh, more of those type of targeting so he can stay out there and play. The other guys came in and did good. And he's just a, a, to me, he's like an all conference type safety. He kind of just shows up. A, you watch the game, he just shows up a lot. And uh, not having him out there did hurt us. Talk a little bit about the Law Tech defense right now. They're ranked uh, first amongst the conference. Yeah, they're doing a really good job on defense. Um, they're running a 3 3 5 scheme and, and doing some really good things there. And um, uh, they're, you know, um, so they're aggressive on what they're doing, and um, it's impressive how they're how they're playing on defense. Anyone there on that end that kind of stands out? Yeah, they've got um, they've got some really good players there that are doing well. They're you know the big nose tackles are um, um, Blay and, and and Bush rotating in there, and um, Mikael Clark's a big defensive end. Um, and that's a so they're big and long in there. You know they're six three, they're six four, they're six five. You know they're close to three hundred, so they're big and athletic. And the Zach Zemos, the inside linebacker, he's 6'4", 240, 236. He's playing really well. And then in the secondary, you know, they, they rely a lot on Blake Thompson, Isaiah McCleave, they make a bunch of tackles for them. Um, and uh, they're, they're doing a good job there. So they've got some good talent, and they're, they're playing really hard. Talk a little bit about just setting the tone in conference play, getting that first win. Yeah, we, we definitely – we definitely need to uh, get a win and get back on track, and I think that's what La Tech feels the exact same way coming in, and uh, that's what we plan on doing. I know that's what they plan on doing. So, yeah, it's, it's an important game. Um, they're all important. Every single game is important. Um, but starting the conference out, um, first conference game at home um, is extremely important for us. And knowing, you know, uh, it's going to be Hispanic Heritage Night at the, yeah. at the stadium. Just talk a little bit about that and how that first yeah, it's real. It, that's really exciting, and the, the, the diversity of Miami I, I love. And when I coached at San Jose State, it was the most like on the West Coast. It's the most diverse campus, probably. And on the East Coast, I would say FIU is the most um, you know uh, diverse. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and it and you know getting to know um, different cultures and and all that is exciting to me. And because you know people are people, and they they got great hearts, and you know it's it's so much fun and. I'm excited that we're honoring that and doing that for for the game, and um, we need a lot of people there. It was good. We had another good crowd, and so we'd love to have another great crowd this week. So thanks for asking that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe. First time for you facing lots like you were able to see them on the sideline last time. What did you notice about them? Great program, great football team. I say those guys come to play uh, day in day out, every play. I seen that last game. Uh, it was a close game uh, and a low scoring game, but. I can say like they come to play for sure, and also after watching the NC State game. Just talk a little bit about your last game. I know it didn't end up being what you guys wanted result-wise, but you still threw for the most career yards of the highest career, most yards in your career so far in mm -hmm. a single game. Just talk a little bit about that performance. Uh, coming into the game, we knew we was going to dominate the past game. I say, and it was just great execution by me and my players. I say, and great job blocking my O line. I give kudos to those guys. I've been feeding them for the past couple of weeks, and you know the turnout been great. But I say, just execution. You know, you go out there, execute, make the right reads, and make the right plays and throws, and then things like that happen. You know, uh, get the guys in the playmakers' hands, and they make plays for me. How much of a focus is it for you to kind of spread out the ball? It's not one main guy. You're kind of going through every receiver, basically. 
Oh, I say it's not really something that I do on purpose, but it just happens, you know. I throw the open receiver, so whoever open, I throw him the ball. How much different has it been without Rocky? Obviously, you only got to use him for one game, but mm -hmm. you know, still not practicing. Rocky, well, we we miss Rocky, you know what I'm saying? It, it impacted us, but you know we got guys that's gonna step up to the plate and try to fulfill his role. And I say guys like Josiah Meeman, Antonio, uh, you know those great guys. They help with the pass in the run game as well, but we we do miss Rock. It's real important, you know. Uh, we lost two games that we should have won, uh, so it's like very important. It's on our mind, heavy, and we got to go one and know every week from here on out. I know you kind of mentioned it there, uh, but just overall, how would you assess the non-conference slate for you guys? Um, after the Indiana game, I don't feel like we should have lost. We lost the FAU game because of me. Uh, I take that. I could take that. And then that last game uh, this weekend, and, you know, that was a tough one. Uh, nail biter. It, it shouldn't have been close, but you know those guys came to play for every every play. They played hard from the first to the last quarter, and they made big plays. You know we kept kept them in the game, and then we turned the ball over twice. That kept them in the game as well in that last fumble. But other than that, we had the game in our hands pretty pretty the whole game. Nah, I'm like we we knew what those guys was doing coming into the game, and they did exactly what we thought. Uh, that's why the pass game was so successful. Uh, I missed a couple throws here and there, but other than that, we was dominant. Talk a little bit about your connection with Juju Lewis. You guys, the, the, the touchdown again. Uh, Juju, that's a great guy. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, he was you know in his head that he wasn't getting the ball and only getting in the block, but. I kept telling him, like, you know, it's okay. Your time coming, just be patient. And guys tend to give up right before things get good for him. So I told him, just keep going, you know. Came back next week, FAU game, he scored. And then this week, he had a big game. Uh, sad that he got hurt, but I'm proud of him. And I told him, like, you know, just be patient. Like, that's the lesson learned in life. That's why you get a lot of more blessings when you are patient. You spoke a little bit about Lobsack. Just any players on the defense that kind of stand out to you a little bit? Nah, but I know one of the uh, DBs, Lil Mike, number five. Uh, it's going to be good to play against him. He's from New Orleans. You know, they got some good football, but I ain't get a chance to play last time, but they going to see me. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No problem. Just assess the, the non-conference slate for you personally. Oh, um, Indiana week one, I felt like that was a, a good match. I felt like defense was, was going good. Like, we hitting on kind of all cylinders, really. And then uh, kind of just let up a few busted plays, and then came out Central Michigan, played play lights out, everybody turnovers like getting we emphasized getting turnovers a lot. So that having that game break out five five picks, other turnovers as well, that was good. And then Monmouth game felt like we was uh, uh, I felt like we was coming out we was coming out strong at first. I feel like the big thing with us defensively, we just have to start. Like, we'll either start fast and then die and then try to pick it up at the end. We just got to be more consistent overall as a whole, whole defense. And we'll be good. Personally, is there something that you worked on in the offseason that maybe you could attribute to your success early on? Uh, yeah, uh, last season I had just, like, after I had got hurt and got concussion and stuff, my, my tackling wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, and I was missing a lot of tackles. So this season I just, throughout the whole offseason and spring, I tried to get stronger and bigger and just tried to focus in on um, tackling more. Uh, they like to they like to throw the ball, so I, I know all our DBs they itching for for that this week, um, especially to bounce back from that last performance as well. We gave up 400 yards or, or, some, or something like that, but yeah, I know they throw the ball a lot, so we we can't wait. What's it been like playing with JoJo now and getting that opportunity? Uh, yeah, Joe, uh, that that's been my roommate since since last year. So when I was kind of with him when when they told him he was ineligible and everything. So that that kind of like that whole season, like I was just trying to like play for him, just keep him in high spirits the whole time. He was keeping me up. Like we'll come back after the game, talk about uh, the film and just what I could have did better, this and that. So playing with him, it's just like having him out there with me. It's just like having another brother. Just we just chemistry clicking. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Smoke. He was a great player. Like, would because especially last season when we played him, we would hit him and he'll just get, keep getting back up. Like a lot of big hits, and so he was a, he was a tough player for sure. So I know they probably got a lot of other guys over there as well. But yeah. Does, does the game plan for you personally change just depending what quarterback starts for them? I know there's some controversy there when you may start on Saturday. 
Um, yeah, uh, the, I don't think the game plan is really going to change like because I feel like all the quarterbacks are kind of similar in their own way. So I feel like our, our game plan going to be our game plan regardless. Assuming Jack Turner is a starter, just to you, what, what does stand out about him having the most, I guess, throwing the ball? Um, he, he definitely likes to like likes to throw it up to the receivers. Like, you can tell he trusts his receivers. He, he likes the 50-50 balls. So I like our DBs in 50-50 situations.